What's up, my executive board? Welcome to episode eight of Movie Madness Marathon, guys. We are officially 22 days from the release of the movie Outlaw Posse, guys. But we're not even gonna waste any more time. Let's jump straight into it. Let's go. Yeah, in 2023, I identified as a rapper. Cut the chatter, it's not a factor. Who coming after? I plan to be the last one standing, total disaster. Cause everybody don't go up. It's like the rapture, see you trying to be ahead of the game. You moving backwards. I told you that it's levels of this. Climb the ladder. I'm bringing niggas down to the atoms. It never matter. All right, you guys. So again, welcome back to Movie Madness Marathon. This is episode eight. Guys, day in the life as a cash driver. So basically guys, I know I tell you the stories about how I met people and this and that and what was all going on guys, we've had fun. But I also wanna give you guys some of the stuff that I did on my own. So guys, this episode's more so gonna be like a presidential pointer episode guys, where I'm giving you guys the, the information and such about my role on Outlaw Posse as a cash driver. As a cash driver guys, of course, it's pretty much in the name of what you're doing, you're driving the cast. Basically, they would give me a sheet every day with call times up there and it was actually called a call sheet and it had everybody from the actors to the producers to the people with food, the horses, me and such. All of us were up there and it had our certain times of when we were when we were called to come into set and that's when you would clock in. So I would clock in through text message. I would text my manager like, hey, I'm starting my rounds to go and pick up the cast and that's how you clock in and when you clock out is when you get home from dropping everybody off once you park in your driveway that's when you get home that's when you get paid i mean that's when you that's when you're clocked out for the day basically as a cash driver though guys your job is to make sure that the cast has the smoothest ride possible to and from set some ca some cast members don't like music in the background basically told me yeah so playing music sometimes because when actors or actresses are trying to get into character when they're trying to embody it sometimes music might make them feel a different way and it might throw them off a of character for instance like somebody like evan peters who played jeffrey dahmer in the dahmer story if i'm playing really a be happy music and he's trying to embody such a dark person it'll be hard for him to embody that character because I'm playing such upbeat music, especially when they're studying their lines. Because most actors and actresses, when they get into the car, are reading their lines, trying to make sure they're set for the day so we don't have to do as many takes, but that never works out that way anyway. It's always about the director and how many takes he wants to do in his vision, so that's always never the case. However, they're always studying, they're always trying to figure out how to like get in that emotion of that character. I just got lucky because all of my cast actually preferred to hear music. So I got to play some good songs for them and I was playing really good music like to um, not anything like nowadays where it's just, you know, so sexual or whatever like that. But I was playing them more of the old hits and the old jams and they were kind of like, yeah, hey, you know, it's a little peaceful ride to get their mind off of just the heaviness of trying to embody a character on set. Um, another thing as a cash driver, you are pretty much always on call. Um, yes, in the morning you have your set pickup times and, you know, where you're getting them from. But things can change. I wouldn't pick people up from the airport. I wouldn't took like certain other like crew members places like one of the guys who was taking stills and stills guys are photos that people take of the behind the scenes parts of set. So when you go on the websites like IMDB and you look up those pictures, those that those are pictures of photographer that was behind the scenes on set were taking so that people could see what was going on behind the scenes once that film comes out. So I had to drive one of the photographers somewhere to get lenses and other things, enough things from the airport, changing out rental cars, guys. I mean, cash driver, like, yeah, I was a cash driver, but wherever you're needed on set, like, you can fill in any position. Other than people say, if you can do it and you can prove it, you're in it. Like, that's that. So I was helping out set PAs as well, guys, during the day, because after I put, drop everybody off at set, there was no driving that needed to be done because we were there for 14 to 16 hours. So I was basically chilling, just filling in where I could, watching scenes and all that. Another fun little fact, guys. Because I was a cash driver, in which I know the Lord was just looking out for me, and in technical terms, a set PA. I didn't always have to be working uh, with the set PAs doing different things. So I would sometimes spend my time hiding in the shadows, literally behind wherever Mario was, watching him direct the scene to see exactly how he did it. And just so I could pick up on my own mental notes and just shadow him and, you know, without really, you know, shadowing him. But uh, no such position as shadowing a director 
However, me being the cash driver and not having to do anything until the beginning and the end of the day, I got to sit back and watch and watch the master at work. Love seeing it. Wish I could go back and do it all over again. It was amazing. Basically, as a cash driver, you're pretty much always on call. Um, one of the actors, for instance, on set was like, hey, my family's here. I want them here. And it was like, okay, Crystal, I need you to go pick up his family. Like, you know, it was just like whatever. They just call me like, hey, Crystal, uh, so-and-so is needs to go back to the room to get this. So you take them there and then bring them back to set. Like, you know, you're another thing. I know you're like, well, okay, you're out, you're out there driving a car, which, yes, it was a company-provided car. I know you're like, okay, but you're driving a car. Like, what about gas and all the rest of that? yes so gas you we had a big gas truck on set so whenever i needed gas whenever i was running low i would just go to the truck they would fill it up and i would just go about my business one of the things that helped me stay on point is uh pretty much setting multiple alarm clocks and taking notes so they would give me pictures so i would just have to take a picture off the second second assistant directors and yes i meant to say second twice it's the second second assistant directors phone second second assistant director is in charge of the scheduling for the next day so while everybody's on set and action cut makeup whatever he's in the trailer working on the schedule for the next day basically i would go up to him like hey i'm about to drop off my last rounds what's my schedule for tomorrow he'll either text it to me or he'll be like hey take a photo of it this is what i'm doing and guys it, it was very important to always have on ringers always have on notifications because, I don't know, I can't count on two hands how many times my schedule changed from the time I was there. Like, I would be like, okay, I'm gonna go pick up DC Young Fly at 7.15. And then I wake up and it's like, actually, no, go get him at 8.30, you know? So you always have to be on call, of like always kind of sleep with one eye open because whatever time we start and whatever time we're supposed to stop, that is it. There is no in-betweens, there is no running longer because if you run people longer, you gotta pay more money. And a set has a certain budget, it's just not like the people just giving up, like, oh, here's overtime. Like, no, they wanna try and start at a certain time, they wanna try and stop at a certain time. So it was just it was just so many working parts, so much stuff to learn, so much stuff to grasp that it was like, my lord. But I, I got it all done, guys, we did it. It was amazing. And always make sure you're sleeping with one eye open, keeping your phone on you at all times and fully charged. Make sure you're always available because you never know what they might need. They might need you to be a set PA. They might need you to be special effects. They might need you to, uh, you know, hold this sheet, this lighting sheet here. You never know, but always be available because then once they see that you're more useful, they're more bound to keep you around, guys. If you aren't subscribed, if you aren't, if that notification bell isn't hit, if you aren't following me on Instagram, I'm not quite certain what you're doing. But you need to get it together, guys. We are literally 22 days away from the release of the movie, okay? And we are filming every single day until it comes out. And as always, as I always like to end it, Jesus loves you. He wants a relationship with you. If you are alive today, that is another opportunity for you to get it right. Don't miss out on Jesus because Jesus does not want to miss out on you. And as always, my beautiful, wonderful, magnificent executive board, Keep it executive. Peace.